Hello friends, hope you all are doing good and in this video we are going to cover the 7 testing principles which every QA uh, should know and uh, these are very important from the perspective of IS2QB so if you are like trying to give IS2QB then this is one of the most important points okay and uh, let's start okay just tell, let me select my pen okay so the first point is that a testing shows presence of defect that means that even if you are given a application okay and you have exhaustive tested it and like but you cannot say that this is 100 percent bug free okay you can find bugs but uh, at no stage you can say that okay this is 100 percent bug free application and like this is the reason you will find production like issues in prod okay so couple of years back there was an issue with uh, zomato in which like they they were free orders so you were able to place an order for free so these are the uh, like bugs which goes into production and you can say like this product is 95% uh, tested but you cannot ever say that like this is 100% tested okay and like the second uh, principle is related to the first one that exhaustive testing is impossible so if given an application you cannot say that okay i have tested each and every module because there can be some areas or not area but there can be some edge test case which you are going to miss okay so you don't have to stress that much about it and you cannot ever say that like uh, i have done each and every module and because uh, like some edge cases will always be missed by you and as an end user like i am i am an end user and i am using the application uh, in the production and i am going to pick up this bug so like you cannot do anything about it the only thing which uh, you can do is that like identify the risk area that possibly in your previous two builds uh, you are seeing that okay at at the checkout page we are finding too many bugs so you can focus on the checkout area more okay try to like uh, try to find bugs in the checkout area more as compared to other modules so this is like exhaustive testing is impossible the third thing is uh, like early testing so start your testing as early as possible like previously if you have uh, gone through the waterfall model so in that like this is a negative of waterfall model that the testing doesn't start till development has done their work so development will give the code to qas and after that only like qa will start testing this code and if there is a bug then the whole cycle start from the requirement gathering and like this is the this is one of the negatives of uh, waterfall model okay but nowadays we are using agile and the beauty of agile is that like everyone can uh, start according to their um, like whatever they feel comfortable with and uh, so let's say there is a requirement analysis phase so here only you have to understand the requirements in such a way that um, at the later stages when you are testing so you will be able to find bugs in the development okay so as we know the unit test cases uh, unit test cases are written by developers so at that time only you can fix the bugs if you have the like uh, if you have the access to development code okay so for that we need access to dev code so this is also a part of shift left shift left testing in which we try to test on the left side that means what is like in the software development life cycle what is coming before testing that is development so try to find uh, the bugs in development that will save us cost and it will save us time also okay now defect defect uh, defect clustering so what uh, this principle says that like 80 percent of the bugs will come from 20 percent of the code okay this is also known as uh, pareto principle okay so if even if in the exam you find like this principle so just go with it that 80 percent of the bugs will be uh, in the 20 percent of the code okay so it can happen that okay you have made your application and in the uh, let's say add item to bucket okay so this is your cart page and there is some issue like coding issue in this and like possibly after two more 
objects this is not getting added okay so you can find more bugs here than the other modules so this is the pesticide paradox this is the one of the most important principle so what like uh, let's try to get in the history that where this word pesticide come into picture so back in 860s and 70s there was a research which shows that okay the uh, let's say we are using 50 gram of urea on pesticide okay so after some time they will uh, like uh, they will uh, gain some kind of uh, like power that this urea will not work on it okay uh, so they need to increase the dose so as we uh, move towards further like uh, in the recent times so you have to increase the power of this urea so got it so similarly uh, as with the same data and same test case uh, you will not be going to yield new bugs because whatever the bugs which are uh, present in the application are already found uh, by the data which you have prepared earlier so for that like there like the uh, solution to this problem is that you can like write test cases after two to three sprints like try to add new uh, test cases in that or possibly change the tester because there is something called tester mindset so different set of people can find different set of bugs okay working on the same test cases so this is what pesticide paradox says that uh, like after a certain time the same test cases and same data will not yield you desired amount of uh, result or bugs okay uh, this thing is also related to the pesticide paradox that uh, this is testing is context dependent okay so uh, let's say you are designing an uh, like there is an app for flight okay and there is an app for e-commerce so you are not going to uh, e-commerce so you're not going to test the same applications based on the same type of test cases for flight or maybe um, for tourism industry we we will focus more on the api part because uh, let's say we are make my trip okay we are mmt and each and every request like this uh, result which we are showing on our page is getting generated from indigo like different other websites air india so in that case it's it make more sense to go towards api testing rather than upi testing not upi but ui testing so like with the e-commerce whatever the uh, like inventory we have okay so that is with the us or with our same vendor so we will like focus more on the ui testing or the usability testing on the e-commerce website so again like this is different uh, products need different solutions okay and absence of error policy again this is one of the important principles that if your software is unusable even after testing okay so you have developed an app and possibly it is tested everything is correct but in the end like uh, you get to know that uh, you have tested this application on like different requirements okay so then maybe the software is not usable to the end user then what's the point of development and every effort which we have put till here so again like uh, you have to see that uh, like the application should be tested again uh, this uh, certain test of uh, requirements okay and in the end like uh, usability testing should also be done so that uh, let's say everything is correct but the user is not able to find maybe this is of uh, white color and your button is also white color okay then um, like user is not going to click on that white but uh, like on this button then what's the point of developing this application so you got my point again guys if you have liked this video then hit that like button or uh, click on the subscribe to get similar kind of content in future and uh, if you have any doubt in any of these points just comment down below and i'll be very happy to help you out thank you guys